As I begin this morning's service um, on Father's Day, I do wish not each and every one here happy Father's Day, but also for those that are viewing us live this morning, we want to wish you a happy Father's Day as well. And on that note, we want to thank each and every one for being here at Highest Praise, but also for those that are viewing us live, we want to thank you for tuning in to this morning's service. And also, um, those on our television program, which is WHFL Channel 43, one in Goldsboro, and also Time Warner Cable 21, we want to thank you for tuning in to our service as well. And if you don't have a church home, we'd like to take the opportunity to invite you to come out and, and be a part of what God's doing. And people ask me one time, what, what's your denomination? What are you? I said, we're a, we're a Bible-believing church. And that's all you need to know. Amen. Amen. I want to go into this Father's Day message. Um, and, and, of course, one of the greatest and the favorite fathers of all in the Bible is, uh, is the prodigal's father. And um, I want to go there because I think this is a message that we need to hear, that the, the men need to hear, the fathers need to hear. But I think it's something that the whole world really, truly needs to wake up to and see this illustration of what Father God illustrates what a heavenly Father is this morning. In Luke chapter 15, I will be in beginning in verse 11 in Luke chapter 15. Um, I will share the story of the prodigal. In Luke chapter 15, beginning in verse 11, and he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with rodeous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk of that, swine, of that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he had came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath deceived, received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured the living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. And... All that I have is thine. It was meant that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. 
Well, that scripture is, is so important. And how does that portray Father's Day? Well, I want you to understand something. This is a story that, that God has chosen to illustrate heavenly fathers. See, first of all, he must then be the ideal earthly father to study. In order to celebrate Father's Day God's way, we've got to understand what God says about, heaven, about fathers and how we do them God's way. Amen. See, the story goes that he was a father of two sons who were prodigals for a time. And what does prodigal mean? Meaning they were exceedingly or recklessly wasteful. See, that now both of them had serious prodigal problems. The younger was a prodigal in choosing the pleasures of sin. The older was a prodigal in choosing pride for self. So, but they were still this man's two sons. But because the father was what he was, the prodigal became what he should be, both of them, because of the father and what the father did. See, the younger son returning, and then the older in a decision to make a decision on how he was going to follow what his father had done. So what kind of father was he? Well, this Father's Day, I want to tell you, first of all, as we look at Father's Day, and this is a, a message that is sometimes it's, it's hard for us because some of our fathers have gone on to be with the Lord, are no longer with us. Some of our fathers that, you know, we, we, we have maybe issues with or maybe we were raised in, a, in an era where things didn't go like we should. And then you have fathers that have, um, like myself, that um, it, this means a lot to me because even though I know, you know, that um, I made mistakes. Any father never made mistakes? Even though I made mistakes, I realize as I see this message that if I reach anybody today... It's to tell you one thing, that turning your life over to God and being a father that God has called you to be is a decision that we all have to make. And I can tell you without a doubt that you can wait till it's too late to turn around and, and say, okay, this is the way I do it. You know, as myself, I do pay the price for living a life that did not include God. Because it did separate me from my children. But as a, a father that has served God now for years, I, I trust God that he will restore and rebuild. So I want to send this message out today to anyone in the family, anyone listening, that if you're a father listening today, it's never too late. God will restore and rebuild no matter what Satan has tried to tear down. And that's where I walk by faith, trusting in him to do just that with us this morning. He was an approachable father, church. We read in verses 12 through 18, the text says that, that he, it, it would um, give us something about the family history that would tell us about this approachable father. But first of all, first we don't know for sure, but these are things that seem to take place. seems that the mother of the boys had passed away because the mother was not mentioned. Perhaps at the birth of the youngest son, or maybe perhaps the man had stood at a grave with two boys. Now, regardless, the text also indicates that the man was wealthy because he had servants. So that we're going to look at this approachable father, okay, because regardless of his circumstances, he loved his, he loved his children, amen? Also, look, I want you to think about these, these children, and especially the younger one. Look at the young son. I mean, any of you ever been young before? You ever, you ever had that time in your life when you felt like, okay, man, he dreamed of doing something that you, if you were raised on a farm or raised somewhere and you just dreamed of, 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 of going somewhere to a far country or, or, or getting on a bus going somewhere and, and what it would be like to go to Hawaii or, 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 or other places. Just Have you ever been in that kind of place where you were bored at where you were at? Well, see... This son kind of was at the point where he was just kind of like, man, I tell you what, there's got to be more out there. There's got to be a whole lot going on out there that I'm missing it. Now, see, we've got to understand something as we look at this. Um, the, the younger son could have just, did he go to the father? He did. He went straight to his father because he was approachable. See, what you got to understand as we go in this message, he could have slipped off in the middle of the night and ran away. 
He could have just, hey, he could have asked some others to intercede for him, and he could have went out and done his own thing. But see, this son had such a relationship with his father that most people don't look at, never might have ever looked at, that he actually went to his father and told him what he was going to do. He actually, his father was approachable enough that he knew that even though it was his thoughts and his dreams, he felt free to come right to his father because he said, Father. And, he, and, 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 and the father was there for him. See, a lot of times as fathers, you know, we, we have to sometimes let our children make own decisions. But, you know, my hat goes off to this father because he loved him and he said, you know, um, I'm glad that I have developed a relationship with you that you can come to me with anything. I, that's what I want to say when we talk about this approachable prodigal father. He was the type of father that no matter what you had going on that you could come to him. And, and my hat goes off to the fathers that, that, have, that their children can say, hey, look, we got a problem or I got an issue going on or I've got something and, and, and I'd like to talk to you about it. Um, and... And, you know, as my grandchildren well know me, and some of you know my grandchildren, unfortunately, I am the papa that they all come to with their, some, a lot of their stuff, some I'd rather not know about. <laughs> I'm like, I'm your, I'm your grandpa. <laughs> yeah, but I need to talk with you about this. I said, okay. But the thing about it, I want that. I, I want that open door. I, I want that because I, I want them to, no matter what they've done wrong or wherever they've been, I want them to know that we're there. Amen. Like this Father, our Heavenly Father is approachable this morning. Church, even as you heard the songs, He said, come to Him as you are. See, the, we need to understand something about this. See, we need to understand that this prodigal's father, He didn't care what took place he 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 wanted that door open because um when the heaven father talked about he says come to him as you are see the, the story goes that he was in a fair country right far country rodeus living what's rodeus means he was partying he had gone out there in the world and, and, and basically all these dreams that he had dreamed up, you know, and, and he had pictured all these things that was going to happen to him. Have you ever pictured something and dreamed about how it was going to be and you got out there and found out, uh-oh, it ain't quite what I had in mind. Yep, I thought that was going to be the porniest town I've ever been in, but guess what? It wasn't, right? He had dreamed of some great tasks. I mean, I can imagine how he felt like what was going to take place. But he had found great temptation out there in this where he went. He also, he dreamed of an adventure. But instead, he found agony. And, and he, he dreamed of prestige, but instead, he found poverty. The reason this touches home so much with a lot of us, because we've all been there at, at a young age when we maybe be going in the military or, or ready to get out on our own and experience that, you know, uh, you have to know my sense of humor. Um, I, I kind of, I relate to this so well because I'll never forget that the, the day I thought that I was too big to do it my mom and dad's way. The old saying was, well, whenever you get to that point, find you another table to slide on and feed yourself. But I did, I, I, and, and, but I, I, I didn't have what they had, so I snuck off. And so don't hold it against me all these years later. But I did as a teenager sneak off and, and see some of you say, wow, I would have never had the guts to do that. But I, I snuck off, and I, and, I, and I was a young guy. I snuck off, and I went to the airport, not to the airport, excuse me, to the bus station, because back then there weren't much airports going on. But I went to a bus station, and I got me a one-way ticket, don't laugh, to California. The guy at the bus station, I'll never forget it. He says, I said, how, how far can I get with this? <laughs> he said, well, we can get you all the way to California. I said, how long will it take? He said, about two weeks. This was on the bus because they had to make all this stuff. This is true. Y'all, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but this is the truth. I actually, I actually went, got on that bus, and took off. Mom and dad, nobody knew where I was at. 
I got to California. I still had some money. Because back in the early 70s, a couple hundred dollars, you were rich. So I still had me. Believe it or not, I had about three or four hundred dollars. I got to California, and, and boy, and, and I knew I was out of my comfort zone because the first thing I'd done was went to a fast, you know, a, a convenience store. And I said, I'd like me a nab in a Mountain Dew. I'm going to go on and tell you. I ain't never had the dumbest looks I have ever had in my life. She said, what's a nab? I said, you're kidding, right? It's them square things with peanut butter in them. This woman got me a box of saltine crackers and some peanut butter. I said, that's not what I'm looking for. I said, they're, they're orange looking. They're, they're, they're real orange looking. And she says, sir. I said, ma'am, they're, they're made by Lance. She says, sir, I'm sorry to tell you. We have no clue what you're talking about. And this is the truth. I said, well, okay. So I, I, I went back to the bus station. And, and, and there was, I said, where's the closest airport? Y'all thought I was crazy enough as it was, right? It's this young prodigal. I turned around and I said, I said, look, how much money would it take for me to fly from California to Hawaii? He said, $169. I said, are you serious? He said, would you like a two-way? I said, no, one-way ticket. So I jumped on the airplane, never been on an airplane in my life, and flew all the way to Hawaii. I got off at the airport. I thought, man, this is it. I'm going to go see Magnum. <laughs> I kind of looked like him back then. I had hair. I had a mustache and hair, boy. All legs. And I went in there, boy, and I tell you, I went in there, and, and I got to the airport, and all of a sudden, security met me. They said, sir, um, what's your purpose here? And, I, and, you know, I won't but by 18. I said, what do you mean my purpose? I've come to Hawaii. I want to go to the beach. I'm going to go hang out at the beach. He says, sir, I can't allow you to leave the airport. He says, um, do you have a passport? I said, what's that? He said, well, you're not supposed to be here without one. I said, well, it's a little too late for that. I'm here. And, uh, and this ain't no joke. I had to pick up the phone after spending several days at the airport trying to figure out how to beat security to get out of the airport, and it won't happen. So I finally had to pick up the phone and call all the way back to Kentston, North Carolina. And Mom answered the phone. No, my dad did. Yeah, it was, it was even worse. Better off in Hawaii. I told him, I said, I said, hey, I called my dad, Tom. I said, Tom, this is Greg. Uh, all I heard was this, because apparently it was midnight. I forgot time change thing going on. I, and, and all I heard was this voice. Admiral, it's your son. Your son. It's Greg. And, I, and, and, and all I could hear was a lot of volume. And he said, she says, Greg, where the blank are you? I said, well, you ain't going to believe this. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm in Hawaii, and all I could hear was somebody in the distance, words you've never heard before. <laughs> I said, the problem of it is they won't let me stay. I said, I've got to come back home, and this ain't no joke. I had to get permission to go back. I had to get permission from my parents for the government of Hawaii to let me leave and go back to Kingston. And I know as that prodigal what you can fill your mind full of about, I mean, come on. Anybody ever remember when Magnum come on? Yeah. Hawaii Five-0. Oh, Y'all got remember that. Come on. The man lived in a mansion and drove a sports car for crying out loud. Yeah. Right? Y'all, anybody remember that? Yeah. So you can picture this prodigal. He got out there and he just, he pictured some serious living. Camels, Cadillac camels and he, he just pictured all this stuff going on, and, and all of a sudden, his eyes was open. All of a sudden, all these dreams, he dreamed of romance like Magnum. That's, I mean, let's be honest, the dude, it was just unreal. So he dreamed of all this romance, but the problem of the prodigal, instead he found rags 
Instead, he found reality. Instead of happiness, he found himself feeding hogs and, 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 and nowhere to go. And, and because of the wrong decision, decision that he, he had made. And, and how that he, he had come to the point that, you know, that he realized that he had messed up. Just like I realized that I was in a mess. But then I, I had to turn and, and, and who could I call? That would, that would help me. I want you to know this one. This father was approachable even from the pig pen. He said, I will arise and go to my father. See, this, this, this son knew, man, I have really messed up. Man, I have lost everything I've gotten. I've just messed up so bad. But he, he made a statement. He said, I will arise and go to my father. He was prepared to be thrown out of the family, to be di disowned, to be disaired. He was, he was even willing to take the crumbs from the servants, the bread that the servants had left over. It was better than where he was at. So I want you to note as we look at this, that he knew that his father loved him because he was showed that while he was with them. He knew that he had a father that associated himself with God, the Heavenly Father. In fact, the part two of this is simple. A father who is his son in the son's mind was associated with heaven. Did you know that he, said, he made a statement? He said, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Do you know what this boy first realized? He, he compared his earthly father to his heavenly father because his earthly father served God. And so he, he even made a statement. He said, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. So he knew that he had a father that loved God and that had told him about God because the first thing he says, I've sinned. See, a lot of times we want to tell our, uh, tell our children what to do. And they don't listen. Anybody ever had that problem? You know, you, you sit there and you, you, they, they always say, I'm just going to beat it in your head. Can I beat it in your head? And, and, and we always look at our parents as like they don't have a clue what I'm, what I'm talking about. You know, and, and we think we know everything. But all of a sudden, this son that thought he had it all figured out, all of a sudden, he says, I will rise and go to my father. And when he did that, see, when he thought of heaven, he thought of his father. So when he thought of his father, he thought of heaven because they were connected. See, his father raised him with God. That's what I want to tell you. First of all, we've got to realize, see, we could not be reminded of God without remembering our father is a blessing. Whenever we fathers live for the Lord and serve God, let me tell you something. It's a big thing. And, and to say that on a, on a serious note, I remember, as I told you, how I've lived and, 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 and never lived for God. But did I, did I love my child with all my heart and being? But I can tell you, if you don't have the love of God in you, you're missing the main important factor because God is love. And, and the way God showed it to me was I'll never forget when, when I accepted Jesus in my life and, and, and how he put Joan in my life. And, and I'll never forget, you know, even though our relationship is very strained, one of the, the greatest phone calls I ever received in my life was after I got saved and was serving the Lord and went into ministry that my daughter, even though she's had to go the rose she's chosen, she did make a phone call and tell me one time in my life, when my, early in my ministry, she said, I want to let you know that I got saved. See, I want you to know that, see, whenever you surrender your life to God, whenever fathers, no matter when it is or what time it is in your life, whenever you commit to putting God first, God starts restoring what Satan has tore down. You know, it's, it's, God is, is always about restoring. And, 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 and that was just to let him know, okay, now I'm going to start restoring what's been torn down. If you don't believe in restoration, ask Job. 
just because Job believed and had faith in God. No matter what Satan took away from him, no matter what he destroyed, God brought it back abundantly and above more than he ever could imagine. Now let's look at this father. His father uh, walked with God. So now think about this. Wow, what an impression. See, his son couldn't escape the fact that he had been taught the Lord, about the Lord. Remembering that his father, how he prayed about the devotion times that the father had spent with the son. About the walks he, his father had with God. And, 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 and all these times his father um, associated with God. See, whenever a child gets out there lost in the world, it's because Satan has steered him out there and put him in a place that he doesn't know where he's going and he never realized who was leading him. But see, see how important it is for this prodigal's father that, that knew God. He had instilled the things in him to show him the way back home. Church, I'm telling you, we're living in a nation nowadays that uh, godly fathering is something that's a mockery. I thank God for the fathers that believe in Jesus Christ. I thank God for fathers. I don't care whether you were a teenager or were you, no matter what your age, that you committed your life to God. Because that is what God's all about. And that's what's going to rebuild and restore the church, the nation, the family, is for godly fathers to, have, uh, to, to take charge in a godly way. Amen? Fathers are supposed to be godly. I want to also tell you this morning in this Father's Day's message, uh, it's about a father who was affectionate. He ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. That was in verse 20. See, church, it's nonsense that we're supposed to think manhood caused us to be cold and callous. Yes, I know how everybody was raised. I was raised on a tenant farm. I was raised in certain situations that, you know, it was hard. Hard living, hard work. But listen to me, church. The, the, the worst thing that we can believe is this, that we've got to be hard all the time. See, this, that's nonsense to me as, as, as a father and as a grandfather. I've learned one thing. The greatest thing that I can do is be a compassionate father. A caring and loving father. Sure, I, I, I lost a lot, but I've gained a lot through God. And, and, and what I do is I try to show people how to live for God. My grandchildren right now, some of you have met some of them. Some of them have been adopted that we've accepted into our families. And, and some of them might even be listening now. But they know one thing for sure, that they can approach me. The worst thing in the world is to not be affectionate in a father and then be laying on your deathbed and, and telling them you're sorry. Yeah. See, church, that, that's not what God intended. This, this, this prodigal's father, he, he was affectionate. Man, he didn't say, look, get a high-powered rifle. When you see him come over, he'll take him out. Or better yet, I have seen fathers that actually have said this. Look, he messed up. He made his bed hard. Let him lie in it. I don't care. I've dealt with fathers and, and, and the children have messed up on drugs and whatever. And he said, you know what? Don't look for me to give you no pity on him. See, let me tell you something. That's not God. I love this because what happened was when he fell to him, he, he, he came to him and he kissed him. He, he didn't make no big deal out of it in the wrong way. Man, he was thanking God that he sent him back home. See, I don't know about y'all, but my daughter was to walk in that door today and come in no matter what she's gone through. It would be a blessing. I wouldn't sit there and say, well, what are you doing here? You have no right to be here. No, that ain't what God wants us. God wants us to embrace our children. So what, you mess up? Look in the mirror. We did too. I just pray mine don't mess up as bad as I did. I pray mine don't try to go to Hawaii because it's a whole lot more expensive. I pray that my... You know, I think that's why I've learned to... To, to not shut the door on situations because I'm like, man, you just don't know. Mine wasn't affectionate. In fact, prison was probably simpler than going back home. 
I'll never forget it, that one of them told me, he, and, and I used to get in a little trouble, and they told me one time when the cop, just a little bit, and the cop pulled me over out of, we used to call it the Institute in LaGrange, and a lot of people listen to those ass. And it was, it was kind of the, the no man's land out there in the country, Hardison's Crossroads. And, 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 and one night, I got in trouble, just a little bit of trouble. And the cop, back then, they, don't, they didn't write you tickets. They called your parents because <laughs> they knew them. And he says, all right, Greg, you got a choice. Let's go. I'm going to carry you to your parents or you can go to jail. I said, take me away. I said, because as soon as we walk in that door, there's going to be one of us flying out of it, and it ain't going to be you. And I, and I would. I took the jail time. I knew. I knew. Look, my dad was hardcore. And, 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 but you know what? There was still something inside of me. He's still my father. But, you know, and, and, and what we should do is, listen, you're not going to stop your children from, from making bad decisions. You just have to teach them the godly way. And, and the Bible says, teach them and bring them up into way. And they'll, they'll return. You know, I believe in my life that I would have made a lot less mistakes if, if I didn't do them out of anger and bitterness and strife. If I'd have known, you know, in a, in a loving way of, of compassion. Folks, you know, life is too short for us to, to walk around hard, stiff-necked, and, and, and not having love and compassion for people, for our family. See, this father had been watching him from a distance. In fact, he ran to meet him out of breath, but not out of love. He ran to this child, and I mean, it, and, and embraced him. Look, let me tell you something. I want you to understand this. His son was returning. That's all that mattered. And the time away made no difference to this man. The smell of wine. He had been in a hog pen. It didn't matter to this man. See, the rags made no difference, nor did the empty pockets. He had wasted every dime his father had given him. His son is home, and that is all that mattered. This is Father Day's medicine is about, listen, church, Quit trying to be what God didn't create us to be. Fathers, we need to always have love and compassion. And I admire the fathers that always, no matter how much their children mess up, that they can come to them. Suicide will be way far down whenever our family knows that, or our children know that they can come to us. My grandchildren know right now without a doubt that no matter what they do, no matter how bad things get, that they can come to me and that I will be there for them. Just like with my daughter, no matter what happens. That's about um, affectionate fathers. Affection. That means that we, we love them unconditionally and, and, and no matter what, no matter what. See, God set the example for us. And, you know, I always thank God every day a, a lot because Father's Day, my wife says it, it's kind of tough. I said, no, it's not. I said, it's not as tough as it could be because, see, God has put people in my life that, that I, I treat as my own. I told, I told Joan, I said, I said, I'm a father to a lot of kids. I, 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 love, I love my family. I love my church family because they're going to be with me, see, forever. So I, I don't, I, I let God open the doors to the relationships that I have and set the example so that I won't be a hard, bitter, old person that, that ends up alone. Let me tell you something, church. That's not what God wants us to be. I love to see families get together even though they're all messed up. Now, all of them. They're all crazy. You know, you ever seen family reunions when everybody gets together and they're all a bunch of crazy folks? Right? Come on, let's be real. I know some of you all perfect families and all this stuff, but, you know, and, but see, we love them family reunions where everybody gets together and, and but the greatest gift of all is uh, is, is if we have the love of God in us, how God brings us closer together. You know, through, through Father's Day, I thought about this. I remember my dad, how hard, 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 hard he is.
but I also remember now, as I go to my dad right now, and they're, him and my mom in their 80s, when I go to them now, do you know what I can do? I can go up to them and done something that has never been done. I hug them. And they give it in return because of the love of God that's inside of me. See, that's what an affectionate father will do. They don't, we don't care about what they've done. Did Jesus tell any of us? Well, before I accept you as my Savior, I mean, accept you as um, into my family, as, before I forgive you, I'm going to tell you what you've done, and you're gonna, I'm going to throw it in your face. Jesus said, forgive them. Yeah. Let, let me tell you something. When Jesus forgave them, he forgot. See, church, I'm here to tell you right now, the greatest gift we've been given is a heavenly father for an example to show us how to have love and compassion for all people in need. And last but not least, as I pull this down, a father who was assuring to both. Do you know this father was only not affectionate to the one that run away? He's also showed affection to the one that was hateful. In verse 22, he said, bring forth the best robe. See, godly fathers should take the problems of God as God, the father that takes them. He should take the situations that are, and he should do what? Look what he said. Father should take the problems as God, the father, takes them. And what's that? Cover them under the blood. Amen. Bring them back in. Let them know that Jesus loves them and that, that they're forgiven. The worst thing we can do in life is to never forgive because if you don't it will destroy us our failures have not moved us away from God's love all it is is he's waiting for us to return Father's Day to me is all about a heavenly father that when the world has said that there's no hope for Greg that Father God looked at me and he said there's one thing you're missing I'm your father. I'm your heavenly father. I created you. And listen, I don't make mistakes. From the day I accepted God as my father, from that day forward, he showed me, just like the prodigal's father showed me, that all my stuff I've done, it doesn't matter. He brought me back in. He brought me back into his loving arms, and he showed me how much he loved me and cared about me. He even said, look, no matter what you've done, I'm going to put you where I want you now. And I, I love this because the prodigal brought that boy back in. He, he, the father took care of him. And then look, and last but not least, then he turned around and he, he looked at the son that says, how can you do this? I mean, I, I've done nothing wrong. I've always been the perfect son to you. And now you're going to do this for him? You, you don't realize at the end, he went, the father still went and had compassion on the son that had an attitude because he went out to him to talk to him about what he was doing wrong. See, this father had compassion for the lost one. He also had compassion for the one that thought he wasn't lost. He was there for both of them. See, like this prodigal son, we need to understand the simple thing when he said, I will go back to my father. I have sinned against the Father. Every one of us in this room needs to realize something, that we all have sinned. We all have come short of the glory of God. We all have messed up and made mistakes. Amen. I want you to realize today that God is telling us our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us through everything, and he will always be right where he is. In fact, just like the prodigal, if you call on the name of Jesus, he will run to you with open arms, and he will forgive you if we just come back to him. This is a Father's Day message, but it's a message to every one of us this morning, and it's this. The son could come back to the father. Because he knew that the Father had love and compassion. And I want you to know this morning that no matter the Almighty God that we serve, the Creator, the heavens, and the universe, He loves every one of us in this room. 
every single one of us in this room, God loves us, and let me tell you the great news. No matter where you've made your mistakes, no matter where you're at in them, that if we will come back to the Father today, He will welcome us back in, He will bring us back into the family, and He will restore us to the relationship that we're supposed to have with Him. Now, this isn't a message that is going to probably say, well, you know, this is, this is not a shouting message. No, this is just a message to reach your heart. Amen. Amen. God loves us, church. Thank God. Because no matter what I did, no matter how bad I messed up, I had somebody that loved me that I could come home to. And I won't extend that to you this morning, church. This altar is going to be open. And as this altar opens and as the music is played, I don't want you to get caught up on anything else but one thing. God is still in the same place. Yes, Lord. And if we walk out that door today, there's no guarantees of what might happen in our life. Just as the gentleman... They found this mother that had passed away that nobody knew it just happened. We have no guarantees. What guarantee we have is this, that Father God is there. Yes. And no matter if you're in the middle of a mess, as the saying is, if you're in the middle of your pig pen or wherever you're at in your circumstances, you got to do like the son did. I will go back to my Father. Yes, Lord. And that's all we got to do today. This is an invitation, church. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, God is there. Let's open the altar as they play. This altar is open, church.